Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. 
Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Since 1947, the United States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still live free or die, even though the liberals are out there protesting to change that, it still is live free or die. It has not changed. Here it is this Tuesday morning, November the 15th in the year of our Lord 2016. It is Super Moon Tuesday. Now, I saw it last night. Um, wasn't quite... But it was bright, let me tell you. It was a bright moon last night. We had clear skies last night. Uh, But then we started to get late late in the evening, or late at night, we got this, um, it started to cloud up, but it's like this veil, this misty veil came across first. And the moon was, you know, fairly large and very, very bright, almost full. And it just gave this eerie glow to everything because of the cl- the thin layer of clouds that were that pulled in. It was just it was probably perfect for Halloween, to tell you the truth. But um, yeah, tonight it's supposed to be the uh, the full on, full super moon. But here in northern New England and most parts of New England, I think uh, it is going to be rather cloudy, possibly rainy. So we're going to miss out. So the rest of the nation that's going to be clear this evening. Uh, it's, it, well, instead of sunny, it's going to be moony. Um, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your view of the super moon. The number to call in this morning is the same number as it's always been since coming back on the air. It is six zero three eight three five three two two six. And um, uh, you know, the original number was actually two digits off. By the way, it was a four, not a six. But um, there, there you have it. It is now 3226 in the 603 835 exchange. Welcome. Got a lot again in the paper pile. Got some stuff on Facebook and Google. How they're now, by their actions, are. Now, we remember them, them saying during the election, oh, we're not influencing the election at all. You know, we're. Uh, the, the election isn't being influenced by Facebook or Google or any social media, not, not from us directly, just the people. Um, but now Facebook and Google are out there talking about, you know, um, well, they're not admitting it, but basically their actions are, are suggesting that they believe that they did influence the, um, the election, at least tried to, and it didn't go their way. 
So now they're trying to ensure that the next election <laughs> does go their way. So we'll talk about that. Um, what's Giuliani going to be up to in the Trump administration? What Rahm Emanuel has said about Chicago. I mean, this is... Yeah, I want to start up. Rahm Emanuel. I mean, yeah. folks, we got... We got a president now that says, well, we have, we, we've elected a president that says he's going to put the hammer down on illegal immigration in this country. Now, obviously, he hasn't taken, uh, you know, taken, sat at, sat at his seat behind that famous desk at the Oval Office yet. All right, that doesn't happen until January 20. So we don't know if Trump is going to actually be able to come through fully with his campaign promise of putting the smack down on illegal immigration. Now, we're all, all of us that voted for him, are ho- and even some people that didn't vote for him for various reasons, would still like to see Donald Trump do just that. Will he end up doing it? We'll have to wait and see. I don't know. I know a lot of people out there are just so confident that Trump is going to do everything that he said. I'm here to tell you, folks, don't be disappointed if he doesn't. Look, here, here's, here's a guy that is now getting um, a full dose of reality of Washington, D.C. politics. Now, remember, this guy is not a politician. Donald Trump is not a politician. Donald Trump is a New York City businessman. He does not deal on a daily basis in the world of national and international politics in Washington, D.C. He's a complete and total noob when it comes to that. And right now, he's being handheld by Obama. Now, I don't know how much he's going to be listening to Obama. Probably, um, hopefully not too much. Uh, But, you know, Obama's the guy that's in the office right now. So he's, I'm sure he's going to be paying attention to some of the things. He's going to be told some stuff that he did not know before and could not possibly know before because he didn't have access to, or, and he was not privy to that sort of information. So when you get new information, it is going to change your temperament on certain things. How much is that going to change Trump's perception and view and policy? We have yet to determine. But if you think that he's going to put the smack down and do absolutely just about everything that he promised on the campaign trail, you're some kind of foolish idiot. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen. And as you start to see him put together his potential cabinet and his cabinet picks, look, there's a bunch of insiders there. That's telling us, uh, sure, there, you know, there are some people that are going to, that looks like they're going to be put in positions that, that uh, you wouldn't have expected. But there are people in there, and this is surprising some people, but it is not surprising me, that there are some insiders, some retreads, that are uh, retread names being bandied about. Look, folks, I told you that this was, you can't be a 100% outsider and and get anything done in Washington, D.C., because you got to remember, Trump is coming in there, and many Republicans don't like him as it is. You know, the Republican, and look, you put these people back in office by, by voting for them. So I don't want to hear anybody complaining about Trump not being able to get things done. You put the people uh, back in Washington, D.C. that have the potential of blocking his agenda. Just so you know, if you, ele- if you reelected a GOP or uh, elitist, that's your fault. If Trump can't get things done. Well, he promised that he'd be able to get that. Look, he's just one man. Yes, yeah, he is not the world's end-all, be-all of deal makers. He's a very good deal maker, but he's not the greatest deal maker in history. And and I don't care if you do, if you are the greatest deal maker in history, if you put people in 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 places that of power that have the ability to block your deal, and they don't like you to begin with, and they don't care what kind of deal you come up with, they're all they're there to do is just block you. Well, that's going to happen. And quite frankly, there are some Republican senators and congressmen that we put back in office. That they're only there right now to block Trump. I'm telling you, don't be surprised if that comes about. That's what they that's what they're there for. They're they're gonna be able to take the heat. They're gonna they're the ones that are gonna be able to block him. 
So, you know, th- this is this is why I say this whole thing. Everything is lo- you know, politics is local. Tip O'Neill is right, but you got to make sure that you have the right people in the right positions closest to you. So, in this particular case, it would be senators and and congressmen uh, in D.C. You get the wrong ones in there, even if they are in your party. We already know how many of them didn't like Trump. Uh, but you still put them back in the, in 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 office. Well, Rod, we we didn't have a choice. We, it was either then or the Democrat. Well, you could have chosen somebody else in the primaries in your state. Instead, in most cases, you put the incumbent back in. So I don't want to hear that you didn't have a choice because you did. Most of you did. You could have you could have turned out the uh, the incumbent. Uh, in your primary. But no, you put the incumbent back in, in the primary. So I don't want to hear it was a choice between the Democrat and, and, the, re, and the incumbent Republican, because he had a shot at getting rid of the incumbent Republican in your primary. So Trump is putting together his whole, starting to put together his team. We're seeing some retreads, not, not, not a lot, but we're seeing so, enough that has some people worried, and I'm just telling you that that's just the way Washington works, even for Donald Trump. And Donald has gotten a uh, has gotten a, an awakening, a polit- not a rude awakening, but a political awakening. Uh, because again, he's never he's never been in such a position before. He doesn't know. I, I think Donald Trump is a little bit naive when it comes to this stuff. He's not stupid, and he's not ignorant. He's just a little bit naive. When it comes to the inner workings of Washington, D.C. And um, I think he's going to be brought up to speed pretty damn quick before January 20th rolls around, to tell you the truth. But um, he's, um, he, yeah, look, you know, he's, it, it's, it, he's going to be a breath of fresh air. But how far will he be able to get? I don't know. Let's take a quick call this morning. 731, you're live on the Rod Echo Show. What you got? Good morning. And that that was all you, that was your choices. To come out with the priest, but you had to go to a a high-level prison, because that's what this is like, okay? And you are exactly right. He's one man. Wisconsin had a chance to... Vote for someone that I think was an honest man, that I think is an honest man. But they chose to go the easy route and pick Paul Ryan. And, and you know, I don't know if people realize, but Trump doesn't decide on Paul Ryan. The Congress decide on Paul Ryan. So, you know, the crybaby bullies can get over themselves because, you know what? For the first time since 19, what, 22, they have control of the House and the president and and what everything. So we're going to see what these people are made of. And um, most of them, like you said, I mean, other than Jeff Sessions, I mean, who came to that early on for, for Trump? Exactly. I mean, if you look at these people who who were turning their their backs on him early, I mean, look. That was I mean, Brian. he's got to. Yeah, he can't go. He can't come to, you know, my house and say, "Come and help me," because I don't know what you know. We don't know the inside, just like he doesn't. But I'm telling you this: he's a quick learner. But he's going to have to have. In order, and I do believe this, Ryan's previous, he knows I ran him, I called his office every day for a week. You know, I don't trust him so much, but I do think if you, you know, you hold your enemies close so you know, you know, what's going on. How else are you going to know what's going on if you don't keep them close by? Because Trump's in danger, and, um, and I don't trust in him for one minute. But he, I, I do trust what he is going to do. I mean, he, he's going to, this immigration thing, it's going to, it's 
fixing itself. We have the money already there. We have for the last two presidencies to build the wall, and they didn't do it. You know why? Because they wanted it wide open. But they want to protect other countries to close their walls and protect them. But they want to leave us wide open. That's messed up. But um, I wanted to talk a minute about these race riots because, you know what, I'm I'm a country girl, but I, I'm pretty smart. I'm street smart because I had to be. But it's kind of interesting. I noticed today, and, and you know, because I kind of watch the, some of the media because I want to know what, how they're lying. You know, but like today, I don't know if you've had time to see because you probably got up so early to go to work. But uh, you remember the that movie that they had? It, I don't know if it was on Netflix or HBO, where the guy was found uh, guilty of supposedly killing the woman at his house, and they charged the little yes, guy the, that had the some making mental... of a murderer. Yes. Make? Did you know that this morning they came on mainstream media? They're letting a the little boy go. The uh, the 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 kid that they railroaded the kid, in in yeah the... yeah they they're gonna they they decided that that was a mistake. Now mark my words, this goes back to the race rioting. How do you get people all riled up except you let the white guy get by with something? Mark my words. Friday evening. I mean, at, way on up in hours, I read the bottom of Fox News. Judge has announced that the policeman that shot the black guy uh, was a mistrial. I mean, not my words. They know what they're doing. And, you know, and, and they just, they're doing it. And I'm just telling you, my all, I want people to know something. They're playing us like a fiddle. We've had a black president for eight years, and that black president didn't get elected by just the black vote. He got elected by the white vote, the Latino vote. We tr we trusted him. I didn't vote for him. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to always be honest. But you know what? And when have race relations been this bad? They are cooking us up. You look up, look at the rioting on TV. Most of them are white people. I mean, they're, they're, they're really, they're, they're bussing these people in, and they are, are, they're on buses, and they're paying them 15 to $18 an hour to work 80 hours a week, so they make $1,500. They are causing this on purpose. These schools, if you're in a public school and you are a principal, I used to teach school. You let those kids out to go ride on the streets, you should lose every penny of federal funding. Every penny. And 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 I mean, I'm, I I I wouldn't be playing with this. Now I can tell you that you, we're going they're messing around with a civil war. And you know what? We none of us have lived in the days of slavery. We didn't cause it. I you know I I didn't drive the bus to Rosa Parks. You didn't either. I mean, we just didn't do it. You, were things wrong? Yes, absolutely wrong. Do we, should we have ever let, should that have ever happened? It was history. It was, it was, you know, it was the way we are. It's the way people, humans do. And now we, we've we spent these years to improve this relationship. I have as many black friends as I do white. I really trust my black friends better because they tell the truth. Now, they'll say to you, girl, you're gaining some weight. I'll be like, oh, my gosh, can you just not? They tell the truth. Now, we have to stop what we're doing right here and right now. Before George Soros, who who took the Jewish people's things and their gold and their money and killed them. And he's over here in a meeting today in D.C., meeting with the, with the leaders of the Crybaby Bullies Party. 
Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's trying to well, he's trying to save his own neck. I'm up against that well, heartbreak, yeah. my dear. I do, I do got to run. Okay, well, um, listen, you um, keep preaching. I thank you so much. God All bless right. you. Thank you. You Bye. too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. We'll be back, folks. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on the Rod Eccles Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year.
in just a moment. Stick around, folks. We're just getting started. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please, 
Call or go online right now. So now we have a bunch of people out there talking about um, Bannon, you know, this guy that um, uh, that Trump uh, uh, put in charge, basically, of, you know, well, I mean, he's I guess he's the without calling him such. He's basically a co-chief of staff uh, with Reince Priebus. Yes, I got it. I got how you it's Reince. It's not Rince. It's Reince. I get it. Yes, I understood. I found out yesterday how you pronounce his nickname. It's not even his real name. It's his nickname. I was worried about pronouncing his nickname correctly. It's Reince. For those, that, thank you very much for all of you people who, who, uh, who chimed in to give me a pronunciation lesson. No, I really, I, I, I do appreciate it because I didn't really know how to properly pronounce his his name, um, but it is Reince. But Bannon, everybody's talking about Bannon right now, Steve Bannon. You know, he's the Breitbart guy. And, of course, you know, when are they going to get over this stuff? Everybody, all of a sudden, anybody who's a white Republican is all of a sudden a racist. Bannon's a racist, too, according to the left. You know, he's got all these, look, you cannot help. I love when they do this. I mean, it just makes absolutely no sense. But, you know, they have nothing else to, to hold on to. Um, so they have to go for this type of racist stuff once again, and there really isn't a lot of racism out there. So they have to, they have to, to latch on to anything that they possibly can that has to do with racism. And so Trump, like Bannon and anybody else, um, cannot be responsible when a racist group of people decide to back them or promote them or, or uh, you know, endorse them, or what have you. Yeah, look. It would be like, you know, me going out there and running for public office and all of a sudden, you know, a KKK chapter decides to endorse me. Well, what the left is going to say, see, look, look, the, the, Rod's a racist because because a KKK just endorsed him. Well, I have no control over what the KKK does. I mean, who knows? They could be playing playing the uh, the flip card. You know what I'm saying? Well, hey, let's publicly endorse this guy to get him in trouble. But behind closed doors on the other side, the flip side of that card, we're actually going to be voting for his opponent. See, everybody who knows us knows that we're actually endorsing his opponent, but we're going to publicly say that we're you know, behind him. So it gives him bad press and a bad name. That happens. We know that that has happened. It's happened in the past. We know this has happened. And but so you have no control over who endorses you. What are you gonna do? What was Donald Trump say? Well, you know, hey. No, 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 no. You 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 can't endorse me. I'm not gonna let you endorse me. That you can't do that. You can't walk up to a group you know, you can't talk to a group of people and say, I'm 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 gonna refuse to let you endorse me. No, you can't endorse me at all. What is, what kind of nonsense is that? And and and, and and why would you go ahead and answer the question? Well, do you do you deny or do you uh, uh, somehow disparage their endorsement of you? That, you know that has got to be one of the dumbest questions you to ask a politician ever. A politician cannot publicly come out and start separating people because then the, you know then the media is going to say, well, look, he's separating people out. You know, he's uh, uh, so uh, th- this group over here he doesn't like but this group he likes so is he really a racist and a pre- does he is he really giving preferential look you can't win on that one so you cannot you can say well i do not believe in you know certain things that maybe that group supports i don't believe in racism but you can't go out there and say well you know i'm i'm going to renounce that that uh that endorsement from that group. That, that's political suicide. And, and the media knows that. But they're going to they're going to push this notion that Bannon is because these some of the, some of these racist groups have fully endorsed Bannon um that they're going to try to equate Bannon being a racist too. Well, I don't know if the man is or isn't. I don't particularly care at this point. 
I don't I don't know him that well. I mean, he's he's an unknown quantity to me. Rod, you're in politics. You don't know who Bannon is. Look, I know he runs Breitbart, but that's a news organization. Do I need to know intimately every news chief around the country? That's impossible. I'm not I'm not interested in people that way. Sorry. I'm just not. Yeah, I know a lot of people like Breitbart. For, frankly, personally myself, I'm I I ever since uh, well, I've never really been all that enthralled with Breitbart, tell you the truth. Uh, you know, the news organization. Just I've never really been all that I never thought it was the end all be all of truth telling. Um, you know, they've had their issues and problems. Look, I'm not putting them down at all. I'm, I just don't hold, I just don't have, uh, hold them to this. Some people have this extremely high godlike status of Breitbart, and I don't. Sorry, I don't. Um, it's run by a bunch of humans like everything else is. So what, what am I supposed to do about that? Am I supposed to just all of a sudden, you know, well, it was because it's Andrew Breitbart. Okay, that's kind of like Drudge then. I suppose. I don't, I don't know. In any case, in any case, Bannon cannot control who endorses him. And frankly, I I don't know why anybody would even um, bother to even try to uh, uh, pay attention to stuff like that. You know, you're not gonna. It, it, why? Why waste your energy in trying to distance yourself from groups that you really have no connection with in the first place? I mean, it's just because if you try doing that, that's all that the media is going to concentrate on you. They're 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 not going to let you get off into other things. So um, you just kind of have to. Well, you know, hey, I can't control who endorses me and who doesn't. That's up to them. I'm not going to comment. I got more important things to worry about and do than to try to distance myself from a group that I have no real connection with in the first place. I, really. Well, what's, he, what, what's Bannon supposed to do about, about some KKK group out in North Carolina endorsing him? I, is it really? Well, that just means, Rob, that no, it does not mean, it doesn't mean Jack. Besides, you know, with all these left gr- left wing groups out there doing all sorts of devious things, it wouldn't wouldn't put it, you know, wouldn't put it past them to do this type of thing on purpose just to just to, you know, degrade and denigrate Trump people. Just just saying, you know, we know that they've done stuff like this in the past, but in any case, uh, on to other things here in the paper pile. All right, look, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll come out that Bannon is a racist. Good. Then then I'll react accordingly. But until I don't know anything about the man, tell you the truth, I'm I'm not interested enough to learn. I know. Well, I yeah, I suppose I should now now that he's in the in the inner circle of Trump, is we probably should know more about him, but you know, let's just we're going to have to we're going to have to take a wait and see attitude. We're going to have to see what he does. Really, see what you, I, I know there, there's there's a publication out there that is trying to um, trying to equate. <laughs> now th- this is laughable, folks. They're trying to equate Bannon with Lenin. Uh, Lenin. Yes, you know the the communist Lenin. Lenin. Yes. So he's a, a Bannon is a he runs Breitbart, a freedom organization, basically. Um, they're trying to say that Bannon is a, is a, is a Leninite. He's a Lenin acolyte. He's a, so in other words, he's a communist running a, a, a freedom based news organization. I, I'm t- these people are getting crazy. I'm telling you. So don't, don't put it past them to somehow, uh, have these left wing, hate groups endorse right-wing people simply to give them bad press. I'm t- don't put it past them because they're already saying that Bre- uh, you know Brennan is a, uh, is a Leninite. So he's a Lenin acolyte. So yeah, so you got a guy who runs a, a, a news organization that's all about freedom and open government that supposedly loves a communist and closed government. Uh, somehow that just, it doesn't balance. What also doesn't balance 
CBS Chicago uh, from CBS Local, Rahm Emanuel, Mayor Emanuel, tells undocumented immigrants, illegal immigrants in other words, in Chicago, that Chicago will always be a sanctuary city. Yes, I, ca- I heard this last night on the radio. I was in my vehicle driving on roads to parts that are not my home and uh, doing things and talking to people and, and, you know, generally living my life as most of us try to do on a daily basis. And I heard on the radio that Rahm Emanuel wants to keep Chicago and says Chicago will always be a, um, a sanctuary city because he wants people to be to, to know that they have a safe place. They can be safe and secure. Now, am I not mistaken, but is Chicago not the murder capital of the world right now? They've got more than 600 homicides that have happened in 20, uh, 2016, and 2016 ain't over yet. we got another month and a half to go, which means that the way they've been going, Chicago could hit could clip 700 murders by the time 11.59 p.m. December 31st hits. Just telling you. One city, 700 people. How is that safe? If I was an illegal immigrant, the last place I'd want to go to would be Chicago. I'm just, just, I'm just saying. But even as, this is what CBS Chicago is reporting, even as President-elect Donald Trump vows to immediately deport two to three million undocumented immigrants when he takes office. Now, might I remind people that that two to three million, Donald has already said that the first people that he's going to go after are all of those who are convicted criminals that have just either just been released or about to be released or are still in jail. He's going to deport them first. God, I hope it's not two to three million illegals uh, that are criminals that we're holding, that we're paying for to keep locked up. That's just, that's, that's insanity. But those are the first people that are going to go. That's what Donald said. Makes sense to me. So people that are already, you know, in the system and people that are already, you know, convicted criminals, um, they're gone, according to Trump. So that's two to three million people. Those are the first. Yeah, I I know. You know, Rom wants to keep the criminals. And hey, Chicago's a crime city, right? Isn't that where Al Capone set up shop? It is. He he. Look, I watch the uh, uh, the Discovery. It was a Discovery Channel. Yeah, the the the. What do they call it? The the dramumentary on, uh, you know, it's a documentary drama um, on on Al Capone. And he left he left New York and New Jersey because he thought he had better opportunities in Chicago. And the opportunity arose for him to take over the Chicago mob. And that's basically what happened. But, um, yeah, so. Chicago is. A gangsta city, gangster city, that continues to this day to have a problem with illegal activity such as murder. So if I were an illegal immigrant, the last place I'd want to go to is someplace that I'd most likely get killed. You know, you survive the illegal trip across the desert and the open plains or what have you between Mexico and the United States. You cross you cross the border. You go, that's a dangerous journey. It really is. So you risk your life and you survive that to only get murdered on the streets of Chicago. I'd avoid Chicago. I really, <laughs> I would. Even as President-elect Donald Trump vows to immediately deport two to three million undocumented immigrants. I love how they say that. Just say illegal immigrants for crying out loud. Uh, when he takes office in January, Mayor Rahm Emanuel is reaffirming Chicago's commitment as a so-called sanctuary city. He says, to be clear about what Chicago is, it's all, it always will be a sanctuary city. Emmanuel sought to, uh, sought to reassure those worried about Trump's interview on 60 Minutes, in which he said he plans to immediately deport or incarcerate up to 3 million undocumented immigrants who have criminal records. So, 
Uh, Rahm Emanuel is saying, well, if you have a criminal record, you're safe in my city. See? Look, we got over 600 murders, and, and most of them are still unsolved, so you got to be safe in my city. If you're a criminal, come to Chicago where you'll be safe. You'll be able to commit a crime and get away with it. Now, what we're going to do is get people that are criminal and have criminal records, gang members, drug dealers, where a lot of these people are uh, probably 2 million, it could be even 3 million, we're getting them out of our country or we're going to incarcerate, Trump said in an interview with CBS 60 Minutes correspondent Leslie Stahl. But we're getting them out of our country. They're hill here illegally. So I don't understand what, pe- what the left has, um, what the issue they have with that. You have a criminal. And I'm not even talking about crossing the border because Ill- they're all criminals if they cross the border illegally. But we're not even talking about that part. We're talking about a criminal record. They've committed some sort of crime. I mean, it could be just plain old assault all the way up to and including rape and murder. We know they're there. And these are the people that he wants to get rid of first. And these are the people that people like Rahm Emanuel want to protect by saying we're going to remain a sanctuary city. Are, are, Are you people hearing this? Really? I mean, do you understand what Emmanuel is saying here? Trump wants to get rid of the known criminal illegal immigrants. And you've got this this idiot, Rahm Emanuel, who's saying, well, no, we're going to remain a sanctuary city to protect these known criminal illegal immigrants. In a city that has over 600 murders to date in one year. Now, can I ask a real serious question? How the hell are you going to blame all that on Republicans? You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Eccles Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, 
Stocklet to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. That's the number that you can call should you wish to join me here on the Rod Eccles Show. You know, Rahm Emanuel is, he's the, uh, well, I don't know how you take this, Rahm, how do you take this, uh, this, this, like you never, you never let a, a tragedy or, or, or emergency or what, or what have you go, you know, unutilized according to Rahm, right? You never let it go to waste. I don't know how you take advantage of this. How do you take it? Now, 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 hear me out here. You have a city that is the murder capital of the world. I mean, we're talking 600 citizens of the, of, of the city of Chicago are now dead because of the, the policies of the leftist Democrats in Rahm Emanuel. And you have cities across the globe, and sometimes in places that are, <clears throat> you know, in 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 devious dic- dictatorial regimes, countries that don't seem to have this kind of a problem. And so it is. I don't know how how you can take what what type of uh, of advantage can you take uh, of this situation. Other than oh well yeah I mean, you can you can try to lock down the city you can probably impose martial law or something like that but let's face it, it it's it's I don't think anybody's going to accept it because you're the reason why Chicago's in such a mess. Now granted you know Chicagoans keep electing people like Rahm Emanuel to be their mayor, I, you know I have. <sighs> There have been cities and states in, in this country over the past century or so that have, you know, had the dubious distinction and titles of of being highly corrupt. You know, the state of Rhode Island was once highly corrupt. Uh, Providence, they said, was once highly corrupt. A number of politicians, uh, state and local, in in and around Providence, Rhode Island, you know, ended up going to jail and things like that. But it's, and of course, you know, New Jersey. New Jersey has had its its share of corrupt politicians, both on a on a state level and on local levels, and um, um, you know, like Atlantic City and Jersey City and places like that. But it's it's hard to beat the history of Chicago, honestly, in in the state of Illinois. I look at how many governors. Have gone to jail in in uh, Illinois. Governors have gone to jail in the past century. It's been a lot. I mean, what do you get? Uh, 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 Blagojevich, Blagaga, uh, uh, you know, Blago. Uh, he went to Greece most recent. Um, and, and and a number of city officials in Chicago and uh, and places in 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 Illinois. Um, you know, and, and of course, you know, there's a famous Mayor Daly. Um, I know there are people out there that still stand by Daly, but Daly was highly corrupt, as as you know we've learned uh, since he's not been in office, and and now that he's dead as well, it's hard to. But folks, I'm just telling you, this is the kind of stuff that that this the, these are all Democrats, by the way, most of them, not all, but most of them are Democrats. Democrats are the are the party of the criminal. Let me just put that out there because also look at look who's rioting, rioting and destroying property. Democrats, not Republicans. Democrats are the party of criminals. Plain and simple. 
I don't know, why do people even begin to doubt me and stuff like that? I swear, stop doubting me. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, 
You're proud. The Marines. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Toys, Since 1947, toys, toys, the United States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. studio somewhere within the great grand estate of new hampshire where the state motto is still live free or die it is not big government or bus the call-in number this morning is 603-835-3226 as it is every morning glad that you are here with us this tuesday november the 5th in the year of our lord 2016 as we fast ap- approach the um, the holiday season. Well, we're actually in the midst of the holiday season. Uh, is holiday season now begins with Halloween. I know traditionally it began with Thanksgiving, but um, now because Halloween has become such a big holiday here in the U.S. of A. Um, you ever notice that when you go to other places that they don't? Uh, it, it, well, it depends on the holiday, but they don't say, tend to. Um, they don't tend to over celebrate like we do. In other words, many holidays are not overly commercialized. Christmas here is just is is a huge commercial tradition now. Unfortunately, we've reduced it to commercialism. And but there are holidays that they haven't been able to do that with. Easter is a holiday that has not been able to be commercialized. Um, well, you know, you know, it, it, people will say, well, Valentine's Day, right? No, Valentine's Day has been commercialized. And so has St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day has been commercialized to the point where it's nothing but, uh, it's nothing like, it, it, it's just like Cinco de Mayo. Now, it's just a, it's just a day uh, where you have an excuse and a reason to go out and drink your, you know, until you can't drink anymore. It, really? I mean, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a, Beer and alcohol day. It's all St. Patrick's Day is now in this country. Just like Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo is just another day excuse to go out there and be able to drink without anybody thinking, you know, poorly of you. Oh, man, St. Patrick's Day. Let's go get trashed. Why? Well, because, you know, people look at us funny if we get trashed on the other day. So it's quite a right to get trashed on St. Patrick's Day. It's quite a right to get trashed on Cinco de Mayo. Um, it's quite a right to get trashed on New Year's Eve. 
Uh, any other day it's okay to get trashed at? Oh, yeah, Christmas parties it's okay to get trashed at, right? You know, company Christmas parties. Um, but, you know, St. Patrick's Day is highly commercialized now, overly commercialized. St. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is also commercial. If you don't buy your loved one chocolate and roses, oh, my God, you're an evil per. If you're a man and you're in a romantic relationship with anybody else, yeah, well, you know, maybe you're in love with another guy. That's your guy in love with another guy, but the, and you're the what? What is it? You're the masculine one, and and your your boyfriend is the feminine one. Well, you're supposed to get him roses, just like the guy is in love with a girl. He's supposed to get her chocolate and roses, and be romantic, and take him out to dinner, and all that kind of stuff. Like, highly commercialized. Even Thanksgiving has not escaped commercialism. Sure, Thanksgiving is pretty much the forgotten holiday, unless, of course, you're in the food industry. You know, grocery stores? Oh, you can't get by Thanksgiving without noticing that it is Thanksgiving. If you're in, in a grocery store or a supermarket, uh, over, yeah, hey, you gotta, it's gotta, you gotta have the perfect turkey and you gotta have the perfect this and the perfect, you know, the, the perfect table and the, it, it's ridiculous. It's all over. Well, I, Maybe 4th of July isn't really commercialized because it's hard to do. What are you going to commercialize? Just fireworks? Half the states in the country don't allow fireworks anyway, you know, private fireworks. So uh, that's, yeah. Uh, well, it's picnic day, I guess. You know, go out and buy the hamburgers and hot dogs and, and, and the new grill, but re- that's about it. There's nothing big about the 4th of July. So maybe the fourth is one of the one of the few like Easter is the only they're, they're probably the only two big holidays left in this country that are not commercial. They tried. They have tried to commercialize Easter. But I don't think it's worked. The one holiday where it hasn't worked on commercial commercializing it. Trust me, they've tried. Just in, and they've never really Try to commercialize, I don't think, uh, July 4th. Nah, well, I mean, some people may think, I'm. well, no, they have, Rod. Look, look, you know, all the 4th of July sales and the, all the red, white, and blue, you know, picnic table covers. And yeah, Well, I feel, I'm not saying that 4th of July escapes commercialism any more than Easter does, but it hasn't been over-commercialized. Sure, we've still forgotten the meaning, the real meaning behind the 4th, because everybody just thinks it's a day off and it's a barbecue day and it's a fireworks day. That's not really what it's about, but that's what it's come down to. And just like Easter isn't about Easter egg hunts on the on the um, on the White House lawn, but uh, and, and but and you know Easter bunnies. But th- that's but that's about as far as they go on that. I don't like over commercialism. I really don't. I'm not. I'm not. And obviously, I'm not anti-commercialism i'm not anti-business i'm i'm full full full-on capitalist here but i hate when we take stuff and um when when we take things and then change them to to mean something that they never were intended to mean and that's that's one of the reasons why i want people to send me their original christmas songs it's really got to be about christmas you know christ in there it's really got to be a christmas song i don't i don't like to over commercialize stuff i want people to to remember the real reason for the various seasons uh, halloween's a different story i mean that's that's kind of you know day of the dead type of thing devilish and evil and spirits and demons and that's Probably don't want to go there. We got enough movies to tell us to warn us about that kind of stuff. But the real reason behind Thanksgiving is not football and turkey. I don't think the Pilgrims had football back in the uh, 16 and 1700s. I don't know. I could be wrong. You know, maybe football was invented back then. Probably, you know, you, you, you talk to some historical revisionist and you might find out that that football was, oh, oh the, the original footballers. Well, you know, they were they were the Massasoit Indians. Yeah, you might. Somebody might try to come up with that. Don't, don't doubt them. Uh, but that's not what they think. Christmas is, 
Um, uh, and, and you know, a holiday that is getting is becoming more commercialized too during the holiday season is Hanukkah. Now, all of a, over the past couple of years, I've seen a rise in Hanukkah decor and Hanukkah gifts. I, I, really? Now commercialism is going to destroy Hanukkah. You, know, you, you got to have the perfect Hanukkah decor and the perfect Hanukkah gift. And now there's Hanukkah wrapping paper. Now, I got to ask, do you people, do Jews actually wrap Hanukkah gifts? And there is there really gift giving every single day of Hanukkah? Because all, all of a sudden now it's a big thing. You know, to uh, to give a gift every day of Hanukkah. Well, that's a pretty, you know, if they if they play their cards right, Hanukkah might become might be a co- bigger commercial success than Christmas and Halloween. Look, you got eight days of giving there. All right, Christmas. You know, I know you got the twelve days of Christmas, but nobody gives gifts twelve days uh, for of Christmas. But they obviously give eight days of gifts on in Hanukkah, huh? According to the commercialist commercialism why not you know they they keep that up to go on that route it might be the biggest holiday ever uh commercially speaking it's just i just like to point out stuff like that every once in a while folks uh because we are getting into the holiday season next what next week is thanksgiving for those of you who are who are being you know surprised and shocked with the reality uh, here's a shocker. I do believe Thanksgiving is a week and a half from today. Well, not even a week and a half, just a week, a couple of days, you know, a week from Thursday. will be Thanksgiving 2016, and then you'll be full on in it holiday season. But in any case, oh, the Christmas song stuff, by the way, if, um, if you have an original um, Christmas song, or you've done an original cover of an old Christmas standard pre 1950s song, then uh, you know, and you want people to hear it, send it in MP3 format to the Rod Eccles Show at gmail.com. The Rod Eccles Show at gmail.com. There's full details over at rodeckles.net. Just click the Rod Eccles Show button to get full details on how to submit, what to submit, when to submit. That type of thing. Why to submit. Just make sure you submit by December 5th. Today, hey, today's November 15th. You got 20 days left. That's about it. So get those, get those, that music in so we can start playing it after Thanksgiving Day. All right. Just looking over the paper pile here. What do I have in my pile of electronic paper? Tons and tons of stuff. But what do I want to go with next? How about Trump to meet um, with Pence in order to go over some of their... um, Some of their appointments. And one of the, one of the, the, I don't know if it's shocking or not, uh, because it has been bandied about, but Rudolph Rudy Giuliani, former New York City mayor, is, I guess, inside, in the inside scoop is, is that he is, um, he's uh, being highly considered for Secretary of State. Oh, there are a lot of people that, that would rather have Giuliani as, as uh, uh, you know, the attorney general. Um, I'm not sure myself on this one. I get it. I, you know, I'm being frank. I like the idea of Giuliani possibly being the attorney general. What, but would he make, would he be better utilized and served uh, as secretary of state? I didn't see him in that role at first, but obviously a lot of people did, and now he's seriously being considered for that role. Um, are, are there other are there people that are better 
Would there be better uh, people in that role? Probably. Probably. Um, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what Donald Trump does. Who, who he appoints. But if we're getting this scuttlebutt now, this strong, about you can better believe that that's probably going to be the case, that, that Giuliani is going to be put before Congress to be the next Secretary of State. While the current Secretary of State is wasting taxpayer dollars by being the first Secretary of State of the United States to, um, to set foot on all seven continents. Can somebody tell me, other than, other than this global warming bullshit, why the hell would John Kerry need to, need to go to Antarctica? There's no diplomat, there's no embassy, there's no diplomats down there, there are no countries on, on, on Antarctica. I mean, you, you can't live on Antarctica without uh, you know, having some sort of support system back in the other six continents. This is just, and the cost to go down, it's just ridiculous. Hey, can, I don't know, is he going to, does he have, is he trying to get a magnet, you know, a refrigerator magnet from every, because I, you know, you go places, I do that. You know, you get a, you get a magnet from, from the city or country that you visit, right? So he sort of commemorates that you were there. Um, and it brings, whenever you see it, it brings back memories, but you know, it just lets other people who come into your kitchen on, on your, and see it on your refrigerator. Oh, where's that from? Well, that's from this place that I was at, you know, kind of, so you can brag. Is he going to get a magnet from Antarctica? A refrigerator magnet? What's it? <laughs> is he going to have a penguin? I, so we've got a secretary of state. The world is basically on fire. And this guy goes to Antarctica. I mean, it's just it, the the stupidity, the insanity, the well, you know what he's doing. He's trying. Well, I'm I'm trying to 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 bring light to global warming, man-made climate change. I don't know. Is he is he going to go down there to the to the to the Antarctic station and ask if he can get himself uh, get him a hunt a penguin hunting license or does he need a does he need a well uh, was it a yeah it's just penguins right there's no, nothing really else there's no seals it's penguins is he gonna need a penguin hunting hunting license can I get me a penguin hunting license here well, these people are just so freaking phony it's ridiculous I don't it's just it's 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 annoying to such a point that these idiots I and mean, this guy's a total jackass he's going down to antarctica for what to try to hey just make sure when you're down there um you know john secretary Kerry, make sure you point out all the growing ice that's down there oh i forgot yeah he can't do that because he's all about you know the planet's warming up so the ice is supposed to be melting and shrinking meanwhile the penguins down there they're setting up you know new ice camps because there's so much ice they're loving it oh yeah they're just having themselves a great time penguin city down there you're listening to me your lovable host l rod here on the rod echo show Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. Uh, that's a number that you can utilize to give me a call should you wish to do so. Google and Facebook. Google and Facebook move to restrict ads on fake news sites. Yes, that's right. Alphabet Inc.'s Google and Facebook Inc. on Monday, yesterday, announced measures aimed at halting the spread of fake news on the internet by targeting how some purveyors of phony content make their money via advertising. Google said it's working on a policy change to prevent websites that misrepresent content from using its AdSense advertising network, while Facebook updated its advertising policies to spell out that it that its ban on deceptive and misleading content uh, content applies to fake news. So, well, I mean, there's a lot of fake news out there, but fake news... Uh, well, The Onion is fake news. It, it's amazing how many people actually think The Onion sometimes is real news. Really, and and you know what? The people at The Onion, they they think that they've done their job when they get people convinced that their fake news is actually real. And people actually go to Snopes to try to figure out if some of this stuff that these fake news <laughs> obvious fake news sites uh perpetuate as well they don't really most fake news sites like that are they're they're mostly co- uh, comedic and they don't really perpetuate themselves as being um real news i mean the onion they they it they it looks kind of real but if you pay if you're paying attention you really know that it's not and you know what the onion is um but anyway so 
Uh, the shift comes as Google, Facebook, and Twitter face a backlash over the role that they played in the U.S. presidential election by allowing the spread of false and often malicious information that might have swayed voters toward Republican candidate Donald Trump. Well, they're the ones that did it. They put all that negative information out, uh, out up there about Donald Trump that people just didn't buy and thought, and probably, well, you know, maybe Donald Trump got the sympathy vote. Of some people, oh, they, they, they're just treating him so nasty. Oh, they, they're just so mean to that Donald. Donald can't be that bad. And we know he ain't that bad. So they, they're just so mean to Donald. We got to vote for him. Got to help him out. So now they're looking. <laughs> hey, if, you, if you're a purveyor of, of fake news, then you can't make money on Facebook or Google. Just saying. They're cracking down on you. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. 
With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Welcome back. 603-835-3226. That's the number that you can utilize to call the program this morning and every morning. Yes, indeed. We like uh, we like taking your calls. Hey, um, from the paper pile, speaking of Google and Facebook and Twitter and fake news and stuff like that, Online freedom, this is from Yahoo, by the way, Yahoo News. Online freedom hit by pressure on social media and social apps. Yes, indeed. Governments around the world have stepped up efforts to block or censor social media and messaging applications in a new blow to Internet freedom. A watchdog group says apps, messaging apps. So you can't say whatever the hell you want on, you know, on on in your chat or email or what's a mess uh what's a messaging app whatsapp is a messaging app right yes or or your sms text app the freedom on the net report by uh the activist group freedom house said online freedom decline in 2016 for a sixth consecutive year and new restrictions on messaging platforms such as whatsapp in addition to social networks Now, popular social media sites like Facebook and Twitter have been subject of growing censorship for several years, but governments are now increasingly going after messaging apps like WhatsApp and Telegram. Now, I don't know what Telegram is. I'm I'm not surprised that there's an app, messaging app called Telegram. I'm actually surprised it's taken this long for an app called Telegram to come out. Um... Really? I mean, just think of what What is a Telegram? A telegram is the original mess. Well, it's not the original. I guess smoke signals are the original messaging app. But Telegrams are, they're an old, they're an old school messaging app, right? I know some of you don't even know what a Telegraph or a Telegram is. Yeah, well, I don't have time to educate you on, on that kind of stuff. But I'm just surprised that that there wasn't an app or something. I'm surprised that the, like, you know, Yahoo chat or something wasn't really called telegram. Surprise. Really surprised. Um, messaging apps have become increasingly popular tools for activists. And many of them can offer encrypted communications, which makes it more difficult for the, for the users to be monitored. It's all about governmental monitoring. Folks, can can I just look? look. Here's the, here's a deal across the world. You know that there are problems with our world's governments. When what they're really concerned about is controlling the free flow of information and your speech. It's not for public safety. It's for their own glorification and their own ability to keep hold of the strings of power. This is all about worldwide power. This is what globalism is all about, folks. It's about worldwide power. Make no mistake about it. Now, now to to put it out there for people, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I don't give a rip. I'm an anti-globalist. No, I'm not anti-humanist. 
I would love to see that someday in the future we do get to the point where we're like Star Trek, where we're, where we're fully capable as human beings to have a truly representative one world government. And I mean truly representative, where every nation, every ethnic uh, div- uh, background is well represented fairly and equally across the board. We're nowhere near that yet. We're not. This planet is still too divided over, over seemingly important, which are really, when you get right down to it, not that all, not all that important types of things that keeps us separated. And I, for one, am not going to go ahead and say, well, there's a group of people out there that think that they got all the answers, that we should put all our faith in them and just come together under one government, under these idiots. They're proving themselves that that's not what they're all about. They're not all about, uh, you know, elevating the human condition and moving humankind civilization forward. They're all about just consolidating and having power. Which is why I'm an anti-globalist. Which is why Donald Trump is an anti-globalist. Which is why Vladimir Putin is an anti-globalist. I'm not, I'm not going to get on that globalist train. And you got a lot of these liberals out there that think that that's the way to go, that Hillary Clinton was... Now, Hillary Clinton is a perfect example of why we should not be globalist. She's a prime example of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And now you got governments across the country that you would think that were in, in relatively free-based, you know, freedom-based countries that are cracking down on what you can and cannot say, or what you can say, basically, not only on social media, but on your own stupid apps. No, we got to be able to break into your messages, you know, your text messages, so we can see what you're saying. So if we don't like what you're saying in private, we can come arrest you. Do you realize that that's what they're saying? Look, we've already seen it happen here. What, Do- Donald Trump and Billy Bush had a private conversation on a private bus that somehow got recorded and somebody decided to release it and all of a sudden the private conversation is now out there in public and everybody's got gas going, oh, oh my God, I can't believe Donald Trump said that. He has no business being president because of a private conversation My God, if you heard the private conversations of all politicals, would you have the same type of reaction with these people? No, you probably wouldn't. I mean, just think about your own private conversations that you've had. Would you be ashamed if some of your private conversations got out in public? Yeah, I'm I'm going to admit it. Yeah, I would be. Come on. It's a private conversation. No, you, you would you say things to certain people that you would never say out in public. That's just the way humankind that's just you know, just, just natural human behavior. There's a lot of reasons behind that. I mean, maybe it's because of your morals, maybe it's because of uh, of politeness and how you were brought up and all that and raised and that kind of thing. And there might be a half dozen other reasons why you would not say certain things in public that you that you you feel free to say in private. And this is what the government wants to be able to see what you're doing and saying so they can come and crack, crack your head open. I'm telling you, we're setting dangerous precedent here. And you got a bunch of leftists in this country that think it's quite all right to, uh, to monitor and to censor speech. It is not all right. It is not okay. Especially when you start limiting how people can, can interact with one another, even on private messaging apps. It's not okay when people uh, feel that they're, that they're being watched constantly. The government can get into whatever you're doing, whatever you're saying, whatever the hell they want, and then come and punish you for it. That's kind of like the Minority Report, the movie with Tom, that stupid movie with what's his name, Tom uh, Tom Cruise. Hey, yeah, I can see that happening. Actually, can see, I could actually see that coming to fruition. Somebody predicting that you're going to commit a crime and they arrest you before you commit the crime. You might not even be thinking of it yet. And they come pounding on your door. You're under arrest for the future crime of this. And you're probably like, what? I didn't do it. When? 
I didn't do that. So now, now it's going it's, to, it's the thought police are coming for you. That's what the minority report was all about. Thought police. You can't have a, you can't have a bad thought because that thought could be criminal. Now, 99.9% of the time, none of us ever do anything criminal that we think that we, you know, we might think about doing. Oh, man, I'd love to really just shoot him. And we think about it. But we would never actually do it. You might even say, you know, well, if this person does this to me, I'm going to kill him. But you don't mean you're literally going to make them dead and have them put six feet under. But you can be arrested for that kind of thing now. Do you realize that? So you're having a private conversation with somebody. You can be extremely upset with, with another person. You can, and you can just say to this, to this friend of yours, I am so mad I could just strangle him and kill him. Of course, you really don't mean that you want to strangle them and kill them. But, that, but you're angry, and that's what you say in the private chat. you got a government watchdog looking at that and saying, oh, oh, no, 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 they can't say that. And they come knocking, pounding, they're not even knocking on your door. They're doing the, you know, the SWAT thing, opening, busting down your door. The next thing you know, you're under arrest for attempted murder. Don't doubt me on this stuff, folks. This is what's happening right now. And this is what the left wants to have happen. They want to be able to control your speech because they think that if they can control your speech, they can control your thoughts. And if they can control your thoughts, they can control you forever. That's what it's all about. And trust me, these social media people, Mark Zuckerberg had it right. A long time ago on Facebook, early days of Facebook, when he laughed about being able to get people, he knows more about people than people know about themselves because he can get them to tell him anything. He's got all that data on us. He knows us better than we know us. But all that's about to come to an end, folks, because they're going to start using that data against you. Don't doubt me. I mean, I don't. I put as little information as I can possibly get away with up online. I don't put it up there. I just don't. Because all this, all this stuff is going to backfire on all of us sooner than we think. And it's going. It isn't going to be the social media companies that do it. It is going to be government. I mean, people always talk about, well, geez, I don't like to get all these ads from, you know, Facebook and Amazon. They're just all these cookies. It's not the private companies that I'm worried about that having all this information. They don't have the power to do anything to you, really. They can, you know, they can annoy the hell out of you by giving you ads all the time. It's government who, who you need to be worried about. They're the ones with the real power to come after you. For whatever reason they decide to gin up. I know a lot of people, they're going to continue doing what they're doing. And then then one day they're going to be surprised when government officials come knocking on their door. And there's, well, how did you know? I'm telling you, this is how they're going to find out. They want, look, that was BlackBerry's problem. Remember BlackBerry? Their huge problem was that they were too secure. Governments were demanding that they be that they be giving uh, be given a back door to BlackBerry so they could get in there into BlackBerry it's a secure network and see what you're saying on, on your BlackBerry. They want a back door. There is, I I don't, I don't, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to go along with, with the globalist crap. I'm not going to go along with this, um, this one world government at this time type of thing. I'm not, we're just not there yet. Humanity is not there. I believe that someday we can get there. Someday, 
and and not the liberal way. I, you know, I fully believe that it is going to be a conservative mentality that finally gets us to that point. It is going to be a freedom loving mentality that is finally going to get us to the point where we can get to the point where we can come together as an entire planet under one flag, if you will. We can't get there any other way. It has to be love of humanity, love of God-given freedom, and God-given rights on a worldwide basis. That is the only... you. We're going to have to be able to respect everybody's right to exist. That is the only way we're going to get to the Star Trek-topia that some of these liberals today want so bad. We're so far from that, folks. I mean, we're at least three centuries... I can't see it happening before, you know, three... At least three centuries away. You know, I'm serious about that. We're not gonna. None of us are gonna be around when that actually happens. Well, I guess I can't say that. Maybe technology will figure. Out. They're already working on technology and how to do that by the, to download your your essence, your conscience, um, into AI, artificial intelligence. I don't still. That's not you, by the way. If you, if, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm well. Uh, I don't know. That's getting off into a tangent and, and something else. On <sighs> maybe I should do one of those science programs every once in a while. I, I'm fascinated by t- technology and science. I don't know a lot about it, but I'm fascinated about learning. I mean, there's so much to learn and know. I'm fascinated by that stuff. I hear that stuff, and it's like, wow, really? We're advancing that you know, artificial intelligence is someday soon. You're going to be able to download somebody's brain waves uh, onto a computer chip so you can actually talk to a person after they're dead because they won't be dead. They'll be in the computer? Really? Is that how it's going to work? I don't, I don't know. Can you imagine being able to speak to Einstein today? I wonder what he would say today. Or, you know, Socrates or some of the other great minds of history. So future great minds would never be lost, according to these people who are developing this new technology. Uh, isn't that a little scary? Because, you know, you could e- just as easily save the essence of evil people like Hitler or Nero or Mussolini. Think about that. There's, yeah, there's always... There's balance there's always balance in the universe when you have something good there's always something bad isn't there i guess that's the way it is when you have when you have all these wonderful apps out there that that have your privacy when you have when you have something that's good there's got to be a balance of bad and the bad is government wants to be able to break into your private conversations and do stuff to you because of a private conversation don't doubt me folks don't you're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. 
It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. Welcome back. You know, one of the things that people have to understand about, uh, and this this is why I don't like any of of the tenets of the left. It's it's all a fallacy. It's all fake. It's fakery, fakery to the max. But it's all about control. They don't want you to to have a free thought. They want to be the ones to tell you what you should think and how, how you should think and when you should think it. Because that's the proper thing to do. That's, that's the politically correct thing to do. The problem is, is that they don't know what the correct thing is. Because they, 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 they constantly go back and forth between one thing and the next. You know, hey, it's the politically correct thing to be accepting of everybody. And everybody come together. And then all of a sudden it's politically correct to, you know, well, you know, we need a safe space and, and uh, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, that, that's okay. They can be racist if they want. And it's not really racist because they're not, because they're black. And uh, what? How is anybody supposed to take the left seriously when they keep doing this kind of crap? When they keep pulling this, when they keep pulling this kind of crap? Let me tell you something. The reason why I know, you know, we, 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 we talk about the millennials and, and them being, and how they were raised, you know, partic- hey, congratulations. You know, the millennials are out there talking about their, they can't accept Donald Trump being their president. Well, congratulations to the participation trophy children. This is what you people get when you thought it was okay to try to keep kids from keeping score at the soccer game and, and you know, and, and, and. In their sports league, all the kids get a participation trophy. You don't have a first, second, or third place, but you got per- everybody gets a participation trophy because you were so brave to participate that you should be rewarded for per- just participating. So now they feel that they, that they just participated, so they should get their way because, hey, they're special. They've always been told that they're special. Millennials are such special people. They can do and have anything they want because they're so special. And they've been protected uh, from being hurt, you know, physically and mentally their entire lives. So now when they do not get their way, they don't know what to do with themselves. They need a safe space. And then once they come out of that safe space, they want to go and riot and break shit because they didn't get their way. We can't accept Hillary Clinton not being our president. Why? Half the country had to accept Barack Obama being president twice. Why is it all of a sudden that you can't accept? You lost. They can't accept it simply because they had everything going their way, so they thought. They had control of the media. They had control of social media, which pretty much mean, meant that they had control of the, of, the, of the entire American Internet. They had control of everything they thought. How is it that they could possibly lose? And they lost. That 
pisses them off. That's why they're out there rioting. Not protesting. Rioting. Because they thought they controlled everything. And that's why now we're seeing these reports. Oh, well, me, you know, the, the Facebook and Google is going to crack down on this. And, and uh, you know, go- governments across the world are cracking down on private social chatting apps. And don't think our government isn't going to be a part of that. Why? Because the American people actually this time flexed their muscle and defeated all of that other shit. I know I said it again. Defeated all that other crap. And they can't stand losing. So they're going to make sure that they don't lose again. Don't doubt me. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, They adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. 
We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Since 1947, the United States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. I'm also known as the Truth Hammer, the Hammer of Truth, uh, the Lightning Rod, and so many other cutesy nicknames that have to do with the name Rod. Uh, Rod of Truth, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, Welcome back, hour number three, right here. As I broadcast from the Bunker Eye studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire. Yeah, in hour number three, the state motto is still live free or die. The call-in number is still 603-835-3226. You can still use that number. Still looking for your holiday Christmas music, uh, original music. You know, go to RodEccles.net for more details. Speaking of RodEccles.net, it's an awesome site that is getting all kinds of accolades of late, um, totally revamped from the old site back in the in the summer, um, and it is growing by leaps and bounds, basically almost on a daily basis. So you definitely want to check out RodEccles.net. You also want to follow me on social media. If you're not, you know, if you, look, you may not have a chance pretty soon. The way these people are trying to crack down on social media, who knows how long I'll be able to keep my uh, Facebook and Twitter accounts. So you might want to get a, you know, jump on board and follow me while you still can. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, um, uh, Google Plus. Did I miss any? 
Uh, well, you can find all the social media that I'm hooked up on uh, over on rodeckles.net. But yeah, go ahead and follow me. And don't forget also, this is a perfect time of year to, to grab a copy of my book, uh, The Conservative Ecclesiastes, available as a Kindle download over on Amazon.com for the cost, for the one princely sum of less than the price of a cost or, or a cup of coffee. Uh, can you get all of this wonderful conservative wisdom that you can pass down from generation to generation? And you can get a few copies and hand them out to your liberal friends. You want to piss somebody off, or if you want to just enlighten them, my book, The Conservative Ecclesiastes, will achieve both of your goals, uh, those goals. Um, but hey, one thing they will not be able to deny is deny, they won't be able to deny the truth. Well, I guess they can. You know, there are people that deny the, the, bibli- the truth of the Bible, biblical truth, but they do so at their own peril. Really. So, in any case, speaking of, own, uh, of our own peril, you know, not knowing our history, we, don't, we, we, we revise our history and not know our history and learn our history at our own peril. And we're doing that today, by the way. You know, our wonderful kids and, uh, you know, the, our wonderful minds fulls, uh, full of mush that we send off to these institutes of higher learning that some people call colleges and universities. Um, you know, it's a dangerous time for our chillin'. Yeah, I said chillin'. Okay, should I say cheerin'? It's a dangerous time for our cheerin'. Uh, to be sending them off to to a lot of these liberal-led colleges. Here's one, the University of Virginia. And this is from the CavalierDaily.com. I'm guessing it's the uh, it's a newspaper of choice down there. But anyway, CavalierDaily.com is reporting, professors at the University of Virginia ask Sullivan, President Teresa Sullivan, University President Teresa Sullivan, to stop quoting Thomas Jefferson. I I kid you not. You've got college professors asking the university president to stop quoting one of the founders and the third president of the United States. Stop quoting Jefferson. Several professors on grounds collaborated uh, on, on grounds, uh, you know, the, the university, collaborated to write a letter to University President Teresa Sullivan against the inclusion of a Thomas Jefferson quote in her post-election email dated November 9th. In the email, Sullivan encouraged students to unite in the wake of contentious results, arguing that university students have the responsibility of creating the future they want For themselves. And this is what she wrote. Thomas Jefferson wrote to a friend that University of Virginia students are not of ordinary significance only. They are exactly the persons who are to succeed to the government of our country and to rule its future enmities, its friendships, and its fortunes. That's the quote that Sullivan used in an email. She went on to say, I encourage today's University of Virginia students to embrace that responsibility. Now, some professors from the psychology department and other academic departments did not agree with the use of this quote. No, 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 no. Their letter to Sullivan argued that in light of Jefferson's owning of slaves and other racist beliefs, she should refrain from quoting Jefferson in email communications. Oh, so when she's telling these people, these young minds full of mush, that even though the election may not have gone their way, they still have the opportunity to shape their own destiny. Oh, no, 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 says these professors. You cannot quote Jefferson. Oh, no, you can't tell these kids that they, that they're still responsible for their own lives and use a quote from Jefferson to do it because Jefferson owned slaves. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. I I know, I know, I know. Sometimes it, well, I do. I do get a little sick and tired of having to read this stuff and go over this stuff with you, but that's why I'm here. I do it so you don't have to. 
because I have, I have an in, internal constitution that is extremely high. I can put up with this stuff without it harming me, without leaving any permanent scars, without it, it mentally damaging my capacity. I can do that. Many of you out there probably cannot, but I can do that. Uh, <laughs> I can handle it. You know, there's some of us that can and some of us that cannot. And I know that's that. Well, that, you know, that, that, that is the truth. There are certain, you know, some people can handle certain things mentally. Lot, some people are mentally stronger uh, than other people, just as some people are physically stronger than other people. There's, there's, that is, there, that's not ever in question. Or Well, if you're a liberal, you might want to say that everybody's equal no matter what. And everybody should equal if we're not. It should be equal if we're not. And we should try to make everything equal for everybody. So, you know, equal ability, even if you don't have equal ability, you should be equal ability and equal outcome. That's why we can't have Tom Brady. No, no, Tom Brady's just, you know, he's, he thinks he's just so good at football. But everybody can be good at football. We just have to make sure that Tom Brady understands that everybody can be good at football. That he doesn't have to be the greatest. That he is the greatest. There's somebody out there greater than him. There really is. But nobody will ever know because nobody will ever have the chance to find out if they're greater than Tom Brady because Tom Brady is so great and everybody thinks that Tom Brady is so great. They're not going to give anybody else a chance. So everybody should be equal. But Tom Brady should be brought down so he's less equal than the rest of us. So instead of elevating people and trying to improve their skills, what they want to do is take away the skills of those who are good. You know, like Brady. Hey, Brady. You know, Brady's too damn good. You know what? We're going to have to suspend him for four games next year. Maybe they'll equal the play. Uh, forget about raising the stature and trying to improve the quality of the other quarterbacks and other players in the NFL. No, let's just take Tom Brady out of the equation. So, you know, you know Thomas Jefferson has a, had a lot of smart things to say. But you know what? He was just extraordinary. Let's just take him out of the equation because most of these kids could never possibly ever think of themselves as being on the, uh, being on the equivalent level of a Thomas Jefferson. So you've got to stop quoting him. And we're going to use the excuse that, that you know he was a racist, slave-owning pig. That's what Thomas Jefferson was. Forget the fact that Thomas Jefferson you know, was the, the main author behind the, the deck uh, of, uh, of the Constitution. No, that doesn't matter. Let's not learn about Thomas Jefferson because it's unfair that he was so good at just about everything that he did. And all these kids around here that you're quoting this stuff to, Madam University President, it's unfair to them because none of them will probably rise to the occasion of a Thomas Jefferson. See, I got to stop putting these kids down by quoting him. This is what these numbskulls, these idiots, believe. Instead of trying to elevate all of those college kids to the level of a Thomas Jefferson, hey, let's just eliminate Thomas Jefferson and bring everybody else down to the lowest common denominator. That's what it's all about, folks. And you, you parents... You're the ones spending all that money sending your mind full of mush off to these universities and you wonder why you look on TV and find out, is that little Johnny and little Susie out there protesting and breaking stuff? Harold, look at this. Well, little Johnny and little Susie are making, are making you and your husband or your spouse or significant other or whatever. They're embarrassing the hell out of you because you sent them to these stupid institutions of, of higher learning that are nothing more than indoctrination centers. Your child has been brainwashed. Just to let you know. They've been brainwashed to believe into this, this bastion of stupidity. This swamp of idiocy. And you happily write the check every semester or every year.
And then little Johnny, little Susie gets a useless degree and comes home and, and moves into your basement and sleeps on the couch while playing uh, endless rounds of PS3 games. And then you want to blame who? Oh, Republicans. Yeah, that's right. Evil Republicans are to blame for everything. You know, liberals, they don't, they don't want your, your kid to, to rise to any occasion to better themselves. But, you know, and hey, they're not, they're not allowed to be exceptional either. Because if that kid is exceptional, then everybody isn't special, right? You can't be exceptional and special. when nobody else is exceptional. So all the non-exceptional people have to feel special too. So that means that the exceptional people have to be brought back down to the level of the average instead of trying to elevate those who are average to the level of exceptional. I know some some liberals' head is spinning on that one right now. They're like, what? Oh, what's he talking about? I don't get it. What's he saying? My head's spinning. I can't figure it out. Can't figure it out because you went to University of Virginia and sat in a psychology class with one of those stupid professors telling their university president not to quote Thomas Jefferson. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. Five 
3226. That is my number that you can call. Yeah, go ahead and call it. See what you can see you can get through. What do you got what do you got to lose? Uh, you you'll be one of the um the elites that the uh, that the liberals hate if you call. <laughs> Just it, that's a that's a badge of honor being being hated by elitist liberals because you're expressing your your heartfelt opinion about something. They don't like opinions that are different from theirs. We know this. I don't have to tell you that. You know that liberals hate hate opinions that are different from theirs because they're always right. No matter what, even when they're wrong, they're right. Even when they know they're wrong, they're right. Even when they're hypocritical, they're right. The problem is, is that what they don't realize is, is that they're almost always wrong. See, I'm the one that's almost always right. I, I didn't say always. I said almost always. Yeah, sometimes I'm wrong. It's rare. And not because I'm so smart. I know they like to think that they're right because they think they're so smart. I'm just right because I just use... Common sense and logic. That's it. That's all. Anybody can do it. It's nothing special. It's just actually using common sense and logic. It's any anybody can do that. It does you know? It doesn't take a special. Well, I guess it does take a special person not to fall for the the liberal crap. Like it's illogical to tell your college prof or college university or university um, president to stop quoting a founding father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. University of Virginia folks right there, professors, psychology professors, right right. Hey, look. It's okay. They don't they don't they don't like Jeff <laughs> they, don't, they don't like Jefferson, I guess. I don't know. Well, hey, then then that means that none of these people that are, you know, a lot if how is it that they can dislike Thomas Jefferson because Thomas Jefferson once owned slaves, but yet and still they name everything that they possibly can after Robert Byrd, and that's okay, who is a grand poopa cyclops promoter, whatever, the KKK, for years and years and years. And Jeffer at, least, at least Jefferson didn't, didn't, you know, we know what the KKK has done throughout his history. It strung up blacks and lynched them and... All that, and burned down their their homes and destroyed their blacks' properties and all that kind of stuff. At least Thomas Jefferson didn't do that. But hey, it's okay to have Robert Byrd. You know, and 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 because Robert Byrd went up there and cried over the death of Ted Kennedy. Uh, Ted, my friend, my good good friend, you were gone, Ted. I will miss you. Anybody remember that? Robert Byrd got on the on the floor and pretended to bawl his eyes out over the loss of Ted Kennedy. Ted, I'll miss you. Please. I don't did no did what too soon? I shouldn't bring that up. How long, how long is, well, it wasn't too long after that that Robert Byrd passed away, too. But, you know, the hundred-year-old racist that he was. No, I know he wasn't. He, close, he was close. How old was Robert Byrd? He was close to a hundred, wasn't he? He'd been in there a long, he'd been in the Senate a long time. And, yeah, he's, hey, he's, he's the guy that, that, that Bill Clinton said at his funeral. Uh, I know Robert Byrd was a KKK member, but, you know, you have to understand the time. that He had to do that in order to get elected so he could get the things done that he wanted to get done in, the, in, in, the, in Congress. And I know some of those things that he wanted to get done in Congress are kind of racist, but let me tell you something. He spent the rest of his life after he left the Ku Klux Klan trying to make up for being in the Klan. He spent the rest of his life apologizing. I know you never heard him apologize for being in the KKK, but I tell you, he it was his actions. He spent the rest of his life apologizing for being in the KKK. And he apologized that he had to be in the KKK in order to get things done that he wanted to get done so he could get elected to the Senate and, and, and the Congress. And I worked with Robert Byrd. I love Robert Byrd. Robert Byrd in the races. He's no more racist than I am. I love black women. You know, <laughs> I tell, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting off the track here. Let me tell you, uh, Robert Byrd, maybe he didn't love black women like I did. Uh, God, I got to tell you, I love those black women. 
I know some of them think that I may have raped. I didn't rape any of them. That 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 black kid over there, that, that Danny is his name. He says he's my son. He probably is my son. I don't know. I was probably with his mama some time ago. I'm not going to deny that because she's a beautiful woman. Uh, I'm not going to. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting off on track. I'm here with Robert Byrd. Robert Byrd spent his entire life almost after the KKK. Well, I guess it wasn't his entire life. A good part of his life he spent after the KKK. When did he quit the KKK? I don't know. Did he ever quit it? But he was he apologized for it, even if he didn't quit it. I'm sure he 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 was sorry that he stayed in there as long as he did. He never said it. Well, he didn't mean it. He didn't. Uh, well, uh, he he had to get elected. That was it. He just had to make people believe that he was in the KKK. Well, he was a recruiter, right? So he actually brought in more people. Oh hell, Robert Byrd was a racist. What am I talking about? Where's another black woman that I can get? Hey, hey, honey, you you look good. You got some sugar going on there, don't you? Oh, yeah. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl. 
who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. update for you. An update on a story that I brought to you yesterday about that vet that was uh, denied his, uh, from the Dallas News, Dallas Morning News, that was denied his his uh, free meal on Veterans Day for being a vet at Chili's. Chili's what they call it's not bar and grill it's grill and bars and how they call, I don't I guess they want to emphasize the food part over the alcohol part but Chili's grill and bar and might I add that and I think I've said this before I'm not a huge fan of Chili's you know I'm not a, that type of table fare as they call it um, you know Chili's Applebee's uh, the, the, those they're similar uh, they're they're nearly the same actually you, you know their decor the, uh, they're not owned by the same company are they Chili's and Applebee's I don't think so. But their decor, their, their, their menu items, their pricing, everything about it, they're, they're almost twins. And I'm not a huge fan. Uh, yeah, they have decent food. It does. But I'm not a huge fan of Applebee's and Chili's and, 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 and bar food fair restaurants such as they are. I'm not a fan of them. Uh, yeah, I, I like TGI Fridays. I, like, uh, I, I used to like... Um, um, I haven't been to Olive Garden in years, actually. Now I used to love Olive Garden. Um, I haven't been. It's been a while since I've been to TGI Fridays as well. I've, uh, I found other places that I like better than the than the chain restaurants. But um, uh, Applebee's and and, uh, and Chili's uh, have not been on my list of favorite places to go out to eat when I go out. Um, I'm just not a fan of. of they're fair. That it's that doesn't mean that I don't I you know if somebody takes me there I'm not going to go. I just not a fan of it. Um, any any you know you have your restaurants that you prefer to go to and prefer not to go to and Chili's is one of those I prefer not to go to. Now, it's not it's not that I don't think their food is any good because it's it's okay. Um, Uno's is another one that I find it's okay. I think Uno's is a bit overpriced actually, for for what it is. To me, I think they're overpriced for what it is. Um, not a huge fan of Uno's either. Some people love Uno's. That's great. I'm not, not calling you out for that. Um, you know, I mean, not, not one of my favorites. That's all. 
I, I'm not saying that their food is terrible because I've been to Uno's more than a few times and I enjoyed my meals there. Um, still think it was a little overpriced for, for, in my opinion, but some people think it's fairly priced. Okay, that's fine. I just think it's a little overpriced for what you're getting. But Chili's, uh, I brought. I told you yesterday how how a manager, a young, I don't. He must have been some sort of assistant manager because he looked awfully young in the pictures to be a manager, uh, full fledged manager. But he remo- uh, Tilly's has removed that Cedar Hill, Texas manager who took away a vet's free uh, free Veterans Day meal. Yeah, he took it away. Uh, after confronting the guy, was saying that yeah, you're not a real vet because somebody told me that you're not a real vet. And that's not a service dog, because somebody told me that's not a real service dog. And I'm going to take this this leftover meal here. I'm going to take it away from you. So, um, Chili's decided, uh, I guess, to finally remo- remove the, the man. I don't know what that means, remove. But um, Chili's is now apologizing for what happened to this guy, but this guy is saying Chili's hasn't really uh, approached him or, or responded to him personally. Uh, th- now, now, my day, <laughs> I know people are going to, uh, they, they don't bring this up. Manager couldn't be reached for comment, uh, but he's been put on leave. And this is what uh, KXAS TV Channel 5 is reporting now down there in, uh, in and around Dallas. Um, the the manager has been put on leave. You know, hey, a know-it-all millennial. But Chili's president, Kelly Valade, said in a prepared statement that the restaurant immediately removed the manager. Uh, so one of Walker's attorneys, Kim Cole, said in an email that officials with Chili's uh, and its parent company, Brinker International, apologized to Walker via phone yesterday afternoon. So after I brought you the story about what happened to this gentleman, uh, this vet, um, then the Chili's management ownership reached out to the man and apologized, and they removed the ma- put the manager on leave. I don't should just be fired. For, for that kind of uh, incident. Um, but anyway, that's the update to that. Thought you people would like to know. Still following, if uh, as more information comes about that incident, I will let you know. It is a sad story that we, that, that real true vets have to potentially go through such garbage. At restaurants that aren't really all that great. But, you know, they're not really all that great in my book. Now, if, I mean, they're affordable fare. They really are. I mean, Chili's and, and Applebee's are, are not expensive, really. They're they're really affordable. Um, you can go out and, you know, what is it? Uh, they still have the two for 20 thing, you know, two full meals for 20 bucks or something like that. That's really affordable. You know, two people can go out and get, get dinner and, and a dessert even. You know, was twenty bucks, and you add a couple of drinks on there. If it, and you're in, you're out of there and let under an under thirty dollars, that's you know that's pretty affordable nowadays. Really, it is. And it's a good price. It really is. Um, and so it's not like this guy was you know out there at like Ruth's Chris Steakhouse trying to get a free meal. You know that'll cost you about a buck fifty for two pe- people. And for those of you in Rush Limbaugh's Rialinda, that really means a hundred and fifty dollars. Now, I don't eat there very often because we don't have one nearby. I mean, I got to I got to drive to get to one. But I love Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. That's some good stuff. But yeah, it's it's not cheap. You know, like I said, one hundred and fifty bucks easily uh, for two. But that's including a decent you know glass of wine uh, for each person. But still, one hundred and fifty bucks plus tip. 150 is not including a tip, so, um, you know, it might, well, you could probably get in, in, with tip included, you could probably get in and out of Ruth Chris for, you know, under $170. So, obviously, you're not going to do that every night, or even probably every week, unless you're rich. 
in which case then you probably could afford to do it, but you probably still wouldn't do it. If I was rich, I'd probably do that. I need it at Ruth's Chris almost. There, there's a few places that I, if I was gonna eat, if I was gonna be one of those wealthy bachelors that just ate, that did never cook for himself, and just ate out, Ruth's Chris would be on my, on my list to to rotate, on a daily basis. Um, there are other places that I would go to besides Ruth's Chris. There's a couple of uh, I- Ichiban Steakhouse. Again, not not very cheap, uh, but very very good. Love love going to I- Iki, Ichiban's. Um, Japanese steakhouse and, and getting a show that would be. I know this is not a, this is not a foodie program, but I like to eat like anybody else, like most other people. Um, I would not be going to fast food joints constantly, um, and and their equivalent thereof. Maybe I'd go to TGI Fridays every once in a while, but. There are other places. I mean, there there is these uh, what we call the mom and pop shops uh, that are also very you know they're they're not chains. There's just one of them or two of them maybe. Um, I do happen to like diners too. I like diner for whatever reason. Diner food is always good. Gets hits you in the right spot when you're hungry. Diner food is good. Uh, uh, Red Arrow Diner in Manchester was voted one of the best diners in the country more than once. Uh, it's, it's just fun to go there and the food is, you know, it's diner food. It's halfway decent, you know, fair diner fair. It's not, it's pretty good. The atmosphere makes it even better. The waitresses there make it, make that even better. That's the whole experience. Really? I, I love going to Red Arrow, the Red Arrow diner in Manchester. Yeah, that, that's, that's an unpaid, you know, advertisement for them. They, they probably owe me big time for that, but, uh. Yeah, I used to go to the Red Arrow a lot. They even had a, um, a customer appreciation card. Remember those loyalty cards that were going that were being proliferating all over the place? I don't think they're as big as they used to be, but yeah, the Red Arrow has one too. I don't know. Do they give out? I don't know if they gave out free meals to vets on Veterans Day. Maybe I should ask them about that. They should. They'd probably get inundated though. Um, Chile says they gave out over 200,000 free meals on Veterans Day across the country. Now, I don't think that that Red Arrow Diner would get give out 200,000. There's only two locations of Red Arrow Diner, but um, you know they could they could give out a couple hundred probably. I'm sure in the in the New Hampshire area. Agents brace for pre-Trump border surge. Border Patrol Union President predicts career-level supervisors will now resist Obama directives to stem the rush. Well, Donald Trump's presidency, this is from uh, uh, LifeZet.com. With Donald Trump's presidency now only a matter of time instead of a hypothetical, border agents are bracing for a surge of illegal Im- immigrants at the southwest border as people race to get into the United States before the door is sh- shut. I don't know why, because he's only going to, se- if he's accurate in what he says, he's only going to send them home. At the same time, according to the head of the uh, union representing, si- representing 16,000, that's an odd number. Um, it, what they have, they have, <laughs> it, it would be 165,000 the way that the number is, but I'm going to say 16,500 U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents, career-level managers of the agency, are likely to push back against the directives of outgoing political appointees of President Obama. You can expect to see the uh, CBP pushing back and holding those people, said Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Patrol Council. They're going, they're going, want to make it look like they're in lockstep with Trump, we're already seeing it. They're going want to make it look like. Don't these isn't don't editors? I mean, look, I'm not the world's greatest speller, but come, on, I really are we still speak? This is probably the 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 reason because we don't we have this we don't speak English anymore in this country. 
Oh, the, 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 well, anyway, it's, it's just a, it's a typo. I know they left out a couple of words there, but they were important words. <laughs> they're, they're going to want to make it look like they're in lockstep with Trump. We're, al- we're already seeing it now that they're in lockstep with Trump as far as stopping illegals and uh, detaining them and trying to send them back from whence they came. Now, Judd said the processing center in Nogales, Arizona is set to open soon, and he added that he expects other processing centers to open as well in order to increase detention capacity. And no, they're, they're out there to, to, uh, to detain illegals, not to, not, they're not turning into FEMA camps to, um, to house U.S. citizens who disagree with the government. I know some people are, some conspiracy theorists are out there saying, no, those are not detention centers for illegals. They're for American citizens who don't like the government. I, yeah, I've gotten emails in that. Case. People trying to show me proof that they're right about their conspiracy theory. The problem is, is, is that most of the, at least 75% of the time when these people try to give me evidence to prove that they're right, what they've actually just done is give me evidence to prove them wrong. Uh, yeah, well, some some cons- some conspiracy, not all, some conspiracy theorists are not very bright. They're like liberals. They're not very bright. If you wait long enough, they will give you the information that you need to disprove them. So l- l- let me let me clarify that. If you just wait long enough, a liberal will give you information will give you proof that they are wrong and that you can use to show that they are wrong. But they're giving you the proof thinking that they're using this proof to, they think this proof will prove them right. But they're so idiotic and stupid, they don't get it and don't realize that the proof that they're giving you actually proves them wrong. It's happened more than a few a few times. in my And, and what's, more, more, what's more revealing is, is that they will go to, th- to these so-called, they will go to government websites to prove that they're right. And the government website actually proves that they're wrong. You know, we've got people around the country running around telling, talking about, yeah, well, well, well you know, Obama has, has detained and, and, and deported more people than any president in history. And they give you a website of the government to prove them right. And then you go, you go in and, and, the, and, the, and the numbers don't add up that they're telling you. And it ends up that, the government website just proves that you're right, saying that no, Obama has not deported more people than any other president. And they don't get how they're wrong. They don't. That's the funny part. Kind of like, well, Obama's decreased the deficit. Well, the deficit is not the same as the debt. Try explaining that to a liberal moron. And I had some liberal moron give, give me a, a, a page to the Treasury Department. To try and show that he was right. Like, are you for real? In other words, you're trying to tell me that Obama was good was a good physical hawk because he reduced the deficit. When the man doubled the national debt, he created more debt than every single president before him combined. All the presidents combined before him. But he reduced the deficit. You moron! Look at the debt, the total debt. We still owe more than ever before. All the deficit means is that that the debt isn't as accumulating as fast as it once did. That's it. He didn't eliminate it. So they give you these pages to the government that prove your point, that they're idiots, morons, and they're wrong. But hey, they don't see it. So like I said, you just wait long enough. doesn't take very long to wait. just got to be a little bit patient. They will give you the information. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> oh, man, he's just... Uh, it's just unbelievable what these people will... will, will um, it, it just, yeah. It is what it is, folks. You can't, you can't help it. You can't help it. All you got to do is just wait for, for the liberals to, to trip themselves up 
to make themselves look like you don't have to do a damn thing. It's just sit back, quietly wait until they present the opportunity because they will present it to you. And then, then they will look around and wonder, well, what are they talking about? I'm not stupid, man. I know what I'm saying. And the reality is, no, they really don't. Hang on, folks. We'll be back to wrap it up. We're not done yet. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. So tonight is going to be the super moon. Yes, it is going to be the super moon uh, is going to be out there and people are going to be, I don't know, they're going to be howling at the moon, I guess. Uh, does, will the super moon affect human behavior? Well, I don't know if that's true, you know, werewolves and everything, sure. And there's all, there's evidence that says that it does, the moon does affect human behavior. But it's dubbed the supermoon will be the closest to Earth this century, according to NASA. The full moon won't come this close again until November 25th in 2034. According to astronomers, the supermoon is simply an intensified full moon. You've probably heard that these phases have an impact on human behavior and cause people to act wild. But is there any scientific backing to the lunar effect? Swiss researchers in 2013 found that people slept for 20 minutes less on average when there was a full moon. So evidently, yeah, we are affected by a supermoon. Uh, brief loss of sleep might mean very little to you or I. 
Uh, but for somebody with a condition like bipolar affective disorder or order known as manic depressive, uh, who may be on the cusp of going into a manic phase, that could be a significant trigger. They could be. <laughs> They could become a werewolf, I guess, <laughs> because they're manic. Well, there's nothing they're, bipolar is nothing to laugh at. Manic depresses, but uh, I guess that's what they're saying could happen if uh, during a full moon. And this one's going to be so close. So the tug the tides are going to be higher. You know, earthquakes are going to be bigger. That kind of thing is what they're what they're probably trying to say. So I hope you get to see it tonight. Get out there if you have clear skies. You'll get to see the super moon. We're going to be cloudy here in the Granite State, so I'm not going to get to see it, at least not in person. I'll look at it. have to look at it on online or something on the Internet. But anyway, folks, we are done for the day. Can't believe three hours just flew by just like that. But we'll be back tomorrow for Hump Day, Wednesday. Same bad time, same bad channel. Until then, enjoy the rest of, rest of your Tuesday. We'll see you in 21 hours right back here. I'm Rod Eccles for The Rod Eccles Show. I'm out.